Thanks for listening. For earlier access to these episodes, access to Ask Me Anything sessions, and extended breakdowns of historical and current events, please consider joining our warning premium community by clicking the link in the description to this episode. According to Bloomberg News, this weekend has been another very difficult one for the disintegrating Ron DeSantis campaign. Let's read from the story by Bloomberg's Nancy Cook. Ron DeSantis promised a reset of his presidential campaign. Many of his campaign staffers are still waiting. Several aides believe the Republican candidate's bid lacks a coherent strategy and message. According to people familiar with the campaign, the operation is disorganized, with different teams pursuing their own agendas and little communication between groups, said the people familiar, who requested anonymity to discuss the campaign's inner workings. There's a couple of things going on in that paragraph. First, the Ron DeSantis campaign is disintegrating, and the evidence is the leaks. Nancy Cook's anonymously sourced story makes clear that the voices from inside the campaign expressing such worry are the very people who are responsible for the campaign reset, the Ron DeSantis staff, but they feel siloed, disconnected, and disorganized. One of the things that happens when a campaign starts to disintegrate is the leaking starts. It marks a collapse of discipline of teamwork, and the Ron DeSantis campaign has reached that pathetic stage. It's important to remember, Ron DeSantis isn't running to be mayor of Tallahassee. Ron DeSantis is running to be president of the United States. He is a micromanaging freak show, to say the least. Ron DeSantis has never managed anything, never run anything, besides the state of Florida, which he's done, well, let's just say, ineffectively for the last five years. Despite his 20-point re-election bid, what Ron DeSantis has done is declare war on the state's largest employer and stoke a jihad against the educational system in Florida. Now, Florida voters may like that a bit, but it's not effective leadership. This incredible paragraph details what a sorry manager Ron DeSantis is. Even posting an official message on X, the platform formerly called Twitter, is rife with bureaucracy, according to the people briefed on the communication strategy. The governor and his wife, Casey DeSantis, must personally approve many of the messages, a process that can take two days and can slow their ability to respond to campaign developments, they said. Some, at the highest rungs of the campaign leadership, consider the operation flawed and worry they are watching the Florida governor's chances of winning the GOP nomination slip away. Let's talk about Ron DeSantis' acumen as a manager. He aspires to be the commander-in-chief of the American military, the head of state of the government of the United States, president. He runs an operation where it takes two days, two days to approve a tweet. And apparently the only people that Ron DeSantis trusts to approve the tweet are him and his wife, Casey. What that reflects is a paranoid style of decision-making a culture of mistrust. He's someone who's simply not capable of leading and managing. Heralded as a viable challenger to frontrunner Donald Trump, DeSantis has slid in the polls, committed a series of missteps, and alarmed donors following his campaign kickoff with his spending and strategy. The candidate promised a reset, but his own aides are frustrated and disappointed and a sense of gloom 
permeates his Tallahassee headquarters, according to people familiar with the operation. Well, you don't say. A sense of gloom has descended on the DeSantis campaign. A fog of despair, if you will, hangs over the headquarters, the Fuhrer bunker of the Tallahassee Mussolini. I wonder how the immigrants, the men, the women, the children, dazed, confused, bewildered and lost in a land where they didn't speak the language, and they knew no one, when Ron DeSantis shipped them off to Martha's Vineyard for a freezing Christmas Eve. The reset hasn't exactly stopped him from making one unforced error after the other, said Whit Ayers, a GOP pollster who worked on DeSantis' successful 2018 gubernatorial race. His issue is just he had a hard time dealing with people. Now, before continuing, isn't it important to be able to deal with people just as a general proposition, a human proposition? Now, if you want to lead the people, to be their president, to be the head of state, the commander-in-chief of a system where it is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, shouldn't the person who seeks to be in charge not disdain the people? Thank you for listening to my political commentary. If you like what you heard today, please also consider subscribing to The Warning daily newsletter on Substack. Our democracy hangs in the balance. The 2024 presidential election is the most consequential in America's history. It's not hyperbole. It's a fact. That is why the mission of The Warning with Steve Schmidt is to help readers orient to the currents that are shaping our times and the unseen forces driving politics that are very rarely discussed on cable news. Please sign up at Steve Schmidt, S T E V E S C H M I D T dot Substack dot com. Again, Steve Schmidt dot Substack dot com, or at the link in the show notes section below. Thank you to each and every one of you for listening and watching. There is pressure to turn around the campaign before the first Republican debate on August 23rd in Milwaukee or by September, when the governor and his wife think that most Americans will start paying attention to the presidential race, said a fundraiser who attended a recent DeSantis retreat for donors in Park City, Utah. Now, Park City, Utah is my hometown, and the DeSantis campaign, which is broke, decided to host their comeback meeting at the $1,000 a night Stein Erickson Lodge. What a wise expenditure of the donor's money. And a perfect setup for Nancy Cook's next paragraph. DeSantis fired one-third of his campaign staff, focused his travel to early voting states, and started holding more intimate events and interacting more with mainstream media. But it is not clear to supporters or campaign officials if the reset has been sweeping enough. I'm going to be the one to break the bad news to you. The reset is not working. And the reset will not work. The gloom and the despair, embrace it. Because the sooner you do, the sooner the DeSantis campaign will be over. And that's a good thing for America. When you're losing a campaign, the whining and the complaining and the poor me always comes. And that was before the Republican Party became a great cult of victimization. Let's listen to Hal Lambert, a DeSantis downer. He seems particularly delusional. I think the reset is going great. Is getting out in front of the media a whole lot more and rolling out more policy proposals in the near future, said Hal Lambert, a donor in Texas finance executives. Some campaign officials want the reboot to go further, 
Donors and allies are urging the governor to stop talking so extensively about his record in Florida and culture war fights and broaden his message to appeal to the concerns of voters in places like Iowa. Quite a revelation there. You don't have to be a political genius to figure it out. If you live, let's say, in Iowa or North Carolina or New Hampshire, you really don't want to hear somebody give an hour speech about Florida because you don't live there and you don't give a shit. And that's a big part of Ron DeSantis' problem because he talks incessantly about things that no one cares about. And he's very strange on top of it. But besides talking about things that they don't care about, he also has decided to provoke them and antagonize them with a culture war that he's decided to launch against all of America's culture. And you know what? No one likes it. Not even the MAGA voters. Robert Bigelow, the biggest individual donor to the pro DeSantis never back down super PAC, told Reuters Friday he won't give any more money. He's given $20 million so far, unless the governor attracts new major backers and adopts a more moderate approach. Supporters know the first debate will be a critical moment for DeSantis to introduce himself to Americans who are not familiar with him, several donors said, and they are eager to see how he stacks up. The American people do know Ron DeSantis. They've gotten to know him, and they don't like him at all, and for good reason. Ron DeSantis' campaign is collapsing. It's all but over. It will long be remembered as a national joke, a punchline, about what happens when a strange and paranoid fascist from Florida with his wife decides that they alone can run and win a presidential campaign. The most amazing thing about it is a few years from now, assuming the country's democracy survives, there'll likely be another Ron DeSantis and they won't learn a single lesson from this Ron DeSantis. That's the most amazing thing about American politics. It's the arrogance. The arrogance of people like Ron and Casey DeSantis. Watching them crash and burn is an awful lot of fun, isn't it? Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our Warning Premium community. You can find out more in the description below.